Um, so today is Friday, September 30th, um, and we are at Bagel Beta Bagels with the Office of Technology and Innovation. Um, and um, for everybody that's joined us this morning, if you have questions, please check out this link that's posted in the chat and that you see on the screen, um, and you can post questions there. Um, and before I begin, I uh, just want to double check everyone can hear me and see um, the screen all right. Great. Um, so um, we are Beta NYC, and we are normally based um, right down by the Brooklyn Bridge. Today's a Friday, and we tend to go virtual. Um, so um, that's just a quick little tidbit to plant ourselves. Um, today's agenda, uh, we're going to have a short introduction to Beta NYC, and um, then we're going to hand the floor over to the Office of Technology and Innovation, um, and you'll hear from them. And then we'll have time for Q&A, and then we're going to end around 10.30. Um, a quick review of virtual meeting norms. Please stay on mute. Uh, please use your raise hand function. Use the chat to ask questions or post them in the bit.ly that we've been sharing around. Um, and please stay on your best behavior. Um, we've had to boot people only once in the past. Um, again, the link to ask questions is here. You can also follow um, Beta NYC and the Office of Technology and Innovation on Twitter um, and use the hashtag Beta Bagels to uh, talk about this event. Uh, so we're Beta NYC. Um, we are four staff members, three apprentices, three associates, and um, about five or six incoming fellows. Um, we, you'll see some of us in the room. Feel free to say hi in the chat. They're here to help out. Um, we are a civic technology organization that's dedicated to the interest of New Yorkers. We run a bunch of different programs. Um, we started out as a meetup and in 2008 and um, organized the civic tech community um, and a bunch of activists uh, at that time who were coming together around the open data law and just sort of working to improve uh, how government uses technology, um, data and design. And um, we've since had a long journey of lots of exciting things, including partnerships with government offices, um, like the New York City Open Data team, who we run um, Open Data Week with, and who we um, are also running a new program called the New York City Open Data Ambassadors. We've built tools that support community boards, um, and we've run a fellowship through the CUNY Service Corps uh, for almost nine, nine years, I think, at this, or sorry, nine cohorts um, at this point. Um, so uh, the main things that we do, um, if you're curious, is uh, we run this fellowship, um, and we've since turned it into an apprenticeship. We have a civic innovation lab that um, responds to requests from community organizations and uh, other New York City stakeholders like government offices or um, uh, decision makers who need support in using data to support the decision making or policy making. Um, Z is in the room as well, uh, potentially I think Couch is in the room um, and Eric and they um, are all associates that um, and Z is the lab manager that run this service. Um, we also do a bunch of public programmings and events. Um, that support um, the sort of spread of using open data and technology and design in um, good ways to um, promote healthy governance and um, uh, sort of a good civic tech community here in New York City. And Beta Bagels is one of the ways that we engage with New Yorkers. Um, it's a breakfast salon series that started a number of years ago, um, actually in our office uh, inside of the Manhattan Borough President's office where We've had space for a number of years, um, and it was a way for us to invite New Yorkers to come inside of the doors of a government office and learn about some of the interesting tech and data initiatives going on um, in the city. So we use it as a way to feature civil servants um, who are transforming New York City from the inside out. Um, and we invite anyone, um, and we're always excited to bring in new people with new perspectives um, who have great questions. Um, a quick just thank you to our supporters. Um, we're supported by the Alfred B. Uh, Sloan Foundation, as well as the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, um, and we have space uh, within the Manhattan Borough President Office. Um, and then also a shout out to uh, our LA friends um, who started Data and Donuts and were the inspiration for uh, Beta Bagels. Um, so without further ado, um, welcome to the Office of Technology and Innovation. Um, the Office of Technology and Innovation uh, creates tech solutions um, and digital services and tools um, for New Yorkers. They're sort of the entity that is behind um, everything technology across government offices. 
um, and they are committed to building um, services and programs for the city to um, improve their daily lives. Um, so we have a lot in common. Um, they're a new office, if you're wondering, um, relatively new, about a year old. Um, you may have remembered some of these acronyms um, uh, like Do It or the Office of Data Analytics um, or the uh, NYC 311. Um, these organizations were all consolidated under an executive order back in January um, that said all of them are going to now be housed under uh, one roof where they're going to um, operate as Office of Technology and Innovation. So you can imagine that there's a lot of really interesting work going on right now with all these offices um, being in one house and um, figuring out how to go forward. And now there's less silos. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity and excitement um, around making things more effective and efficient for New Yorkers through technology. So um, we're really excited about this increased coordination between technology um, offices in the city. Um, and we're really excited to hear about it. Um, we will be hearing from mainly um, from uh, a few of today's guests um, and the people you'll see in the room are Ruby, um, who's the deputy commissioner of uh, the strategic initiatives um, department within the office. Uh, Catherine Benjamin, who is the deputy chief technology officer for digital services. Dominic Berg, who's the associate commissioner of product management and Gina Kim, who's the design lead for digital services. Um, so without further ado, don't forget to ask questions. Um, tag us on Twitter, and um, I'm going to hand the floor over to Catherine. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Um, so making sure you can he still hear me okay. Excellent. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Give me one second, everyone. Um, and I'll have Kate jump in my ear to make sure that I am sharing my screen properly once. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oops. Sorry. I jumped ahead on slides, everyone. You're getting a preview of everything. Ah, mm -hmm. well, it's always good to sort of give you a benchmark of where you're going to go. All right, everyone. Slides are sharing, correct? Yeah, looks great. Excellent. Okay. So some of this has already been covered, so I'll just jump into our agenda here. Um, what we're going to do is be talking at you for approximately 20 to 30 minutes. Um, we're going to give you a quick introduction to ourselves. Kate has already done that, but seeing some photos um, as well as our names might help you uh, make sure that you've sort of aligned the person to their name. Um, then we're going to walk you through how we work um, at OTI in the broadest sense, um, but then also go more specifically into digital products and digital services and talk more specifically about that. Uh, then we're going to do the shameless plug for our job opportunities because we are hiring. Uh, and then we're going to switch over to those Slido questions um, and uh, get through as many questions as we can in the time we have. So before we jump into things, I'll first just recap a little bit of what you heard just now. Um, you're gonna hear from Ruby today, who's our deputy commissioner, Dominic, who's our associate commissioner, and myself and Gina, we are on uh, the NYC digital service side of things. Um, so we're gonna be answering questions all together, but in terms of the presentation, you'll be hearing from myself and Ruby. And so without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Ruby, who's gonna help give you a little bit of a whistle stop tour, um, starting in a really broad sense um, in terms of what our work is, um, um, just so you know, one of the ways we tend to give these presentations is to speak as though people know uh, nothing about how our government works or how things work in here in, here in New York. Um, I know that some of you have a really um, strong depth of expertise, but I also have come to some Beta Bagels events and some folks are newer. Um, so just bear with us as we sort of give a little bit of context, just because we know um, we don't want to jump right into those government acronyms and leave everyone behind. We know uh, things can be a little bit uh, challenging to follow sometimes. Uh, so, uh, Ruby. Can I hand it over to you? Yes. How can you guys hear me? Am I coming through? Good to go. Okay, perfect. Hi, everyone. I'm Ruby Choi. Um, first, I'll introduce myself as not a technologist. Um, I'm probably the only one on, on the call, but really excited um, to join this community. Um, I've been working in city government for about 12 and a half years um, in different capacities, but I joined as an intern um, because I was interested in how data could be used for decision making um, in local government um, and uh, started as an intern and pretty much roped me in and stayed for the last 12 years. Um, 
I am here to talk a little bit about my role at the Office of Technology and Innovation um, to give you some context of who we serve and then talk about the structure of city government and then some challenges and opportunities that we face in 2022, which is um, when many of us came in to the Office of Technology and Innovation. Um, and the opportunities here uh, allow us to really think about um, how to restructure our agency in a way that would best serve um, the people of New York City and also um, really define what our strategy is for the next two years. Um, and then I'll end with just saying that what's really important for us is that we have the people to be able to serve the city in the right way. So I'll talk a little bit about um, some of the initiatives around team tech in uh, OTI. So context, New York City, uh, you're all here. So um, you're very familiar with New York City. Um, lots of people, 8.8 .8 million distributed um, across the five boroughs. We're very diverse in um, languages we speak and the places that we come from. Um, from a social economic perspective, we're one of the richest cities in the world, but at the same time, um, there's still 1.4 million people in poverty, one in five children are living in poverty. Um, so this is really the frame of reference to everything that we do. Um, next slide, Catherine, please. All right, so serving New York City, um, uh, city government is organized um, in a very complex and broad way. Um, the five boroughs were consolidated in 1898, um, were governed by the mayor, but also by city council in New York State. The picture in the back is our city hall, um, which half of which is housing uh, mayor's office. Um, that's where the mayor sits, but the other half is also where the city council is. Um, New York State is up in Albany. So all these various places of coordinating uh, the work that we do. Um, budget is huge, over 100 um, billion expenses annually um, in expense, and then 94 billion in capital, which is spanning five years. Um, capital funds is actually where a lot of the big tech and construction projects uh, are being funded. There are 50 plus agencies, um, over 325,000 uh, city government employees, and some of the largest agencies that uh, provide services to the public is education police department and health and hospitals. So that's just some context about city government. Um, next slide, please. All right, so challenges of 2022. So with a new administration um, and change in leadership, um, we um, had to do a quick assessment of what we're coming into, right? Um, overall, New York City government uh, job vacancies were pretty significant. Um, across the board, 8% before IT positions, it's actually closer to 15%. And we're projecting that towards the end of the year and maybe even higher, um, somewhere around 20%, because we are losing more people than we are hiring. Um, and there are many reasons for that. Um, in New York City, there's just uh, such a huge market uh, for, um, for talented people um, in the tech sector in particular, huge um, you know, tech companies. So it's difficult for us to compete both in terms of salary, but also um, you know, some of the perks of working in the private sector. Um, and then the city kind of don't make it easy. Um, there's a very lengthy hiring process. Um, there's a lot of cultural barriers for working in government, a lot of bureaucracy. So it's, it's, it's challenging for us to recruit. Um, and then on top of not having the people, there's a lot of budget constraints around um, how we deliver those services. And from an IT perspective, um, the way we've set up IT projects in the past has led to you know, very large budgets um, and that scope has been very difficult to manage. So we're coming in also with budget constraints on how we can continue to maintain those systems. Um, but lastly, with opportunity here is that we're coming out of COVID um, and COVID from, from a technology perspective has prepared people both, um, you know, in terms of um, doing things remotely, but also electronically or digitally. And there's a great need and acceptance for more advanced digital services in government. Um, so with that, um, Catherine, if you could go to the next slide. I'll talk a little bit about the opportunity here for the Office of Technology and Innovation. 
Um, so Kate already did a little bit of an intro here. Um, in January uh, of this year, Mayor Adams consolidated um, all the different technology offices that were largely working independent um, of one another because they reported up to uh, different uh, uh, sectors of city government um, now into one agency. Um, so hopefully eliminating some of those silos. Uh, the agency is the Office of Technology and Innovation under CTO Matt Fraser. Um, technology really underpins everything the city does. Um, so it's impossible to harness that full potential um, without um, bringing everyone together and eliminating those silos. Um, the tech budget is approximately 3.6 billion annually. We have a 5,000 plus tech workforce. So this is really an opportunity for us to leverage that. Um, we're operating a little bit in a federated management model, meaning that um, we have some operations that are within OTI, but agencies still have their own IT shops and we work very closely with them um, on kind of cross agency projects, but also supporting them from um, you know, the investments they're making in technology and also sharing information across the city. So moving on to the next slide, um, I want to dive into a little bit about what the structure is in OTI. Um, you have the chief technology officer at the top um, and um, the various groups that were consolidated into OTI are represented as divisions. So you have 311, um, you have an office of um, information privacy, um, cybersecurity, data analytics, which I hear you guys are very familiar with. Um, and then um, we have what was uh, uh, tr traditionally called Do It, um, but technology operations, um, which includes application development, infrastructure management, um, management of all of our public safety technology, and then the franchise administration, which oversees a lot of our telecommunication cable uh, contracts across the city. Um, they also recently launched a big, big program called uh, Big Apple Connect, um, providing broadband uh, services to all the NYCHA developments. Um, and then I sit in strategic initiatives. Um, I oversee that team, which is a combination of um, different groups, um, mainly NYC Digital Service, uh, uh, and Catherine will speak a little bit about that soon. Um, but I also uh, play a really big role of basically facilitating collaborating with all the different divisions in OTI with industry and community partners on one hand, as well as um, our agencies in the city. So um, a lot of the, the initiatives that come out of our shop is really about bringing different groups of people together uh, with a common mission or for a common purpose. So next slide, Catherine. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what those things are. What, what are the areas that we're focusing on in the next 18 months? So um, we spent some time earlier this year uh, pu pulling together a strategic plan. The strategic plan has uh, the goal of really defining the mission and vision and priorities of OTI. Um, and we're in the very final stages of uh, releasing it, but here's a preview of our priorities. Um, we've laid it out in um, five areas. The first is uh, building a connected city. Um, so I already talked about our Big Apple Connect project. Um, it's really about ensuring New Yorkers have access um, and um, that it's equitable across the board. Um, the second priority is um, harnessing the power of data. So this is the, uh, the team data analytics, um, but also thinking about um, information privacy, um, how we store that data, how we can really leverage that data for um, data-driven um, decision-making and operations. Um, the third priority is advancing our digital service delivery. So we'll talk a little bit about that with the NYC digital service team. Um, our big project there is the My City portal, a one-stop shop for all public facing interactions with the city. How do we make it simple, seamless, intuitive, um, and as user-friendly as possible when you're engaging with the city? Um, and a lot of other applications um, that we're looking to really modernize and um, make as user-centered as possible. 
our fourth priority is um, innovation. So innovation is in our name. How do we um, leverage innovation to really uh, support both New York City, but also um, city government agencies in serving the city um, in the most uh, effective and uh, efficient way. So there are a bunch of initiatives where we're looking to um, uh, uh, develop the tech workforce in New York City, um, incubate um, startups in New York City, but also really the connection between the tech sector um, and city government. So spurring ci civic innovation uh, where possible. And then lastly, um, our fifth priority is enhancing technology resiliency. You know, we have to make sure the foundation by which all the other things are built upon are reliable, consolidated and secure. Um, so thinking about our infrastructures, thinking about our cybersecurity, um, and then uh, of course our engagements with the very city agencies that rely on us to deliver IT services. Um, and lastly, team tech is really about the people. Um, so I'm gonna segue to um, talking about how um, I mentioned earlier, one of our biggest challenges is re recruiting, retaining talented people to work in city government. Um, and we have a multifaceted um, uh, strategy for, for really uh, honing in on that. Um, the first is to really talk about the mission, right? Like in city government, we're not gonna be able to compete with the market in terms of salary and other benefits, but we do have the most exciting projects going on in city government. Um, and, uh, and you know, people who work in, in the public sector really believe in public service. So um, what we do is really intense, but at the same time, it's really impactful. Um, so we wanna make sure we get that message out there, recruiting with mission first. A couple of other things we're looking to do and excited to also partner with um, uh, the different groups that are, are here today, if interested, is creating pipelines and rotational programs within city government. Um, we are lucky in that we're in such a huge city with lots of schools, lots of um, um, uh, training programs, professional development programs that we can tap into. Um, and we need to do a better job of creating those pipeline opportunities. And then within city government um, and within those partnerships, we'd love to also develop rotational programs where we can hone in on some of the gaps and specific skills that we need in the, in the tech or tech adjacent, adjacent offices. Uh, for example, cybersecurity, we have a lot of vacancies there and we'd love to be able to really upskill and cross train our staff um, to be able to fill those gaps. So we're looking for ideas, we're looking for partnerships um, and we're focusing on that over the next uh, couple of months. Um, and at the end of the day, we really need to promote more the work that we do. Um, we uh, are oftentimes thrown into emergencies. We work really hard um, and then something is delivered to the public, but um, we don't really spotlight all the people that are behind um, that amazing work. Um, so we wanna do more of that um, in terms of uh, employee recognition programs, but also um, just speaking about our work in various um, venues and, and um, uh, ways that we can broadly share uh, the mission vision of our office, but also all across the city, um, the IT work that seems behind the scenes, but is very much in the, you know, on the front lines. Um, and we want to continue to build this network to support culture change, right? Working in government is really hard. Um, I've been here for 12 years and it's, I was very surprised in the first six months that I would stay as long as I have, but there's a lot of bureaucracy. Um, I think you can get through that by building a really strong network of peers, of All right, Hi. you're you lost back. Me? Yeah, you're back. Okay, I'm so sorry. Um, Catherine, can you tell me where I left off? <laughs> yes, we only lost you for like two or three seconds. You were just saying that um, you were surprised um, that you stayed as long as you did after joining. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. yes. Uh, yes, so I was just saying how um, it's really important for us to build this this community of peers and like-minded folks who are interested in in changing, uh, making change, um, and building that, that um, support system. So um, 
I'm sure there will be a lot of questions, but that's the end of my uh, set of slides to talk about um, the context by which we live in, um, in New York City, the people that we serve, and also how we've organized OTI um, and to hopefully uh, deliver the best uh, services we can to New Yorkers. Um, I think I'm passing this back to you, Catherine, right? That's correct. Thank you so much, Ruby. And um, I know I'm looking at the Slido um, and I saw there were quite a few questions about how is OTI structured um, and how do you all work together? So I think um, Ruby's presentation um, touched uh, or section of the presentation touched on a lot of that. But um, if you were the person who asked that question uh, and it didn't if you have further questions, feel free to jump into the Slido and ask some clarifying questions. But otherwise, I'm going to get into so so Ruby's given you sort of um, the, the big overview of the organization as a whole. And so now I'd love to talk to you a little bit just about the NYC digital service. Um, I know we spoke to you a year and a half ago. Yeah. Um, so some of this, um, maybe you know about the general philosophy um, of how we approach the work. Um, but again, I'll sort of start from the beginning because I'm sure there might be some new folks here. Um, if you are a member of the Beta NYC community, you're probably into the digital government community. But in case you aren't, uh, there are digital government teams all across the world. I call it the digital government movements. First of all, I didn't claim that. I just mean I refer to it as that. Uh, but movements plural is important because there isn't just one way that we, uh, one particular movement singular. There's all these different things happening throughout the world. Um, so the logos that you're seeing on the right-hand side of the page um, just speaks to the different ways of working that you see, whether you're looking at the US digital service or 18F or the GovTech team in Singapore or what's happening uh, in Canada or San Francisco. I mean, there's all of these teams and the characteristics that you see are kind of the same. It's really just four things. It's firstly a relentless focus on user-centered design. When we mean user-centered design, what we mean is that we speak to actual end users. Usually this means constituents in government, but it can mean many things. It often also means government um, staff themselves or people in arm's length organizations, but listening to them through doing things like one-to-one -one user research and having their feedback directly inform any subsequent product design. So that's the first thing. The second one is agile ways of working. So in terms of your software development approach, this happens to be a capital A. Um, I know this nuance won't resonate with everyone, but we actually usually mean small A agile. So we're not you know, super prescriptive on precisely what sort of agile approach. What we're referring to here is the concept of working in sprints, usually about two week sprints, and the idea that you're releasing increments of working software that have been tested with users um, both in a user-centered design sense, but also tested in a product sense um, or development sense, and doing that every two weeks and sort of uh, iterating relentlessly. Uh, the third thing is a product management culture, which is why we're so glad that we have Dominic here on the call, because he is a huge champion of using product management approaches. Um, but basically, you know, looking at technology projects from that product management lens. Uh, and then everyone at Beta NYC uh, will be excited about, you know, where possible the digital government movement tends to use uh, use a default to open culture. So that doesn't mean literally everything is built um, open source, but it means that that philosophy um, is off in front of mind and we're looking for ways to incorporate that. Um, and it also can mean not just in software itself or code itself, but also trying to do sessions like this to sort of talk about how we work and make it so that people sort of see what's happening behind the scenes as much as possible so that we can bring in people. Um, and sort of the ethos there is that the more we make clear how we work, the more people are able to sort of participate um, and, and sort of engage with us because they have a better sense of how uh, we're working. So when we talk about the NYC digital Service or digital generally. Um, this is a quote from Tom Lusmore, who, if you're a big digital government person, know that that's an individual who'd worked in the UK. Um, and he has a quote that you'll see a lot. So it's, you know, if you want to remember this quote, if only to know that you're going to see it a lot potentially, because uh, it circulates all the time. And, and sort of the definition of digital for us is applying the culture the processes, the business models, and the technologies of the internet era to respond to people's raised expectations. And that raised expectations bit is just so critical. Um, I'm sure many of you know that people's expectations of what it feels like to engage with government um, have really uh, you know, heightened over the years. And they expect sort of the same caliber of digital experience when they engage with government online, a similar caliber to what they experience when they do sort of e-commerce transactions. Um, and so in order to meet those raised ex expectations, there's a different cultural way of working, different processes, different business models, and obviously different technologies that are needed to respond to those expectations. 
Um, and part of that relates to how we compose teams. And so this is just a sample structure of what we mean when we talk about a product um, a led organization, or when we talk about multidisciplinary teams, uh, we mean, uh, you know, whether you follow things like the, uh, you know, two pizza rule, uh, if you're not familiar, it's the idea that no product team should be bigger than uh, you can feed with two pizzas, um, or this idea of, um, you know, how you structure a team to make sure that it has all of the different types of skill sets that you need and deploy that to a given problem. So you'll th see things like a product manager, a data analyst, a user researcher, a designer, uh, developer, developers, um, and so sort of it's not literally a template for every project, but these are the types of roles that you'll see on projects that we work on. Um, very briefly on this, and I'll show an image of this in just a second, but we also sort of break down product um, in the discovery alpha beta live um, sort of construction of product development. We're in discovery, we're doing outlining of user needs and understanding what uh, the problem space is. In alpha, we're trying to build sort of a very, very MVP that meets um, many of the user needs, but it's not yet something that we necessarily want to release publicly. It's not quite ready for um, prime time. Uh, a beta service is when that's um, improved and often tested at scale. And live is, of course, a live service that's ready for everyone to use. And so what that looks like in the context of iterative development is something like this. And you'll see this a lot if you if you're you know, following or into the digital government movements. Many governments take this approach and also companies, too. But um, this sort of way to sort of break down projects. And to give an example of what this looks like in practice, um, this is an example of a beta. Uh, no alpha product that we'd built. So we'd done a discovery uh, with DIFTA, the Department for the Aging. Um, and then this was something that we built to help bring and exemplify um, um, what a solution could look like. And this is something that we can actually test with actual end users, with actual government staff, and with actual um, providers of services for older adults. And the purpose of this is to explore if we were to build this out more, would this actually meet the user need? Is this, um, is this the right things? Do people want to use it? Is it worth sort of moving forward with this project? So this is something that we built really quickly, um, but it's an example of how we take that engagement with user needs and have that directly inform the product development um, and have that move forward. Um, one thing, this is a photo from, uh, not from New York, but we're also um, really excited about doing user research. Um, we mentioned that before, earlier in my deck, I was speaking to that. And this is an example of what we mean. So on the screen here, you can see a user test that's happening uh, that I was conducting uh, with an individual. And what you're seeing in the room here is a senior stakeholder, an executive stakeholder watching an actual constituent engage with um, the product as it's in development. And so this idea of helped, helping to bring together some of those engagement opportunities um, with sort of decision makers and helping them see how these things that they're trying to advance are, or sometimes uncomfortably are not fully meeting user needs, but making sure that we can then iterate to sort of meet any um, unmet need that's identified through this testing. Um, and so we're able to do this early and often um, and do this upstream rather than waiting until an entire solution has been built uh, to test it. Um, and so finally, um, before I uh, give some shameless plugs about some of the roles we have open, really um, one of the key philosophies we have both for the NYC digital service team and how we work, but also for digital government teams generally, are sort of these three principles here. Um, firstly, the concept of just starting. Um, one thing that's really distinctive about this way of working and that you'll see in, in sort of similar digital government teams all around the world is this idea of just start. Um, it means until we start making something, until we start putting something in the hands of users, it's difficult to know what's going to work or what's not going to work. Um, so there's very much a making culture. Um, related to that is the, the sort of minimum viable everything approach. I think Ruby sort of touched on just the sheer complexity of the work that we do in government. Um, I've also worked in um, private sector a bit, but I think the government work is just the most complex, meaning that if you can't find a minimum viable something, you'll try to boil the ocean and you'll find that success uh, is very difficult to achieve. And so finding ways to make sure that you're carving off meaningful chunks of work um, and, and advancing that um, is sort of a, a fundamental premise of how to approach this work and how to be successful in any digital government team. Uh, and then finally, you've heard me go on and on and anyone who's heard me speak knows that I don't shut up about this, which is learning and iterating. This 
concept of starting with user need. In some cases, embracing sacrificial prototypes. Uh, if you don't know what that term means, it means making a prototype for the purpose of testing to validate or in some cases invalidate something. Um, it can feel uncomfortable when you've built something and you spent you know, a couple of days or a couple of weeks building something and then determining actually it's not worth proceeding. But of course, that's much better than spending a month or years doing that. Um, and so this idea of testing and iterating and learning and embedding that into the, the structure of how your teams build things. So that's kind of the philosophy and how we um, try to approach many of our projects here in the NYC Digital Service and certainly how many digital government teams around the world work. Um, briefly, I do want to just give a little bit of a shameless plug for the uh, open position. Positions. Um, if you're interested, there are um, sort of two ways you could look for them. The first one and the easiest one is nyc.gov forward slash careers. And in a second, I'll drop these into the, um, the chat. So you have both links. Um, so that's all ro roles that you'll see. Um, but the second link that I provided, which is uh, a little more challenging to read out, so I won't in full, um, will take you directly to the OTI specific roles. Um, but to give you a sense of what the roles that we have um, available, uh, this is just a sample. There are so many interesting ones, um, tons going on in cybersecurity, um, a really exciting one. Uh, this is a specific role, a policy advisor role for blockchain. Um, you know, just to be as an aside, you don't see tons of uh, opportunities like that come up. Um, so that's a really exciting position if that's something that gets you excited. Um, we have a design lab director position here open um, in OTI. Uh, we also have a smart city and IoT manager position open and a manager um, for tech workforce. And I think Ruby really gave a good overview of precisely why uh, that sort of work is so important. So that's just a small snippet, um, but there's lots going on in terms of our hiring. So I hope you'll take a look if you're interested. Otherwise, it's Q&A time, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see your lovely faces um, and also see the questions themselves. Um, but I'll also pause just to see if uh, Ruby or Gina or Dominic had anything critical to add that I didn't speak to, or Kate, if there was any urgent clarification needed on anything. Nothing from our end. I see thumbs up from Gina and Dominic. Yeah, um, cool. Uh, well, thank you. That was a great overview of um, of everything that's going on, and um, especially the challenges and um, and opportunities of of all your of all your work. Um, so, for folks um, who are who've just joined us um, or who joined us in the middle of the presentation, I'm Kate. I'm with Beta NYC. Um, we have a space where people have been posting questions. Um, so, I think Catherine, you have access to that. Um, if you want to just sort of take the questions. Um, and uh, we can go through them. And um, uh, for folks who have not seen that link yet, let's put that in the chat again. Um, this is a great time as well for everyone in the room to introduce themselves. If you haven't um, in the chat, let us know who you are, where you're coming from, if you're based in New York City, what, what borough it you're in. Um, and also if you have a bagel, <laughs> like me. <laughs> or have someone who delivered it to you very kindly <laughs> in the middle of the presentation. I, I'm clearly doing it wrong because um, <laughs> I only have coffee, but it's good coffee. So I'll jump into the questions because I know I went a little bit over time. Uh, the first one I wanted to tag Ruby in on, um, somebody had asked, um, and also everyone else is welcome to jump in, uh, but I think Ruby's perspective um, I think would be excellent on this, is uh, what's been challenging and what's been exciting about consolidating six agencies under one roof. So I'll give that one to Ruby in just a second to start us off. Uh, and then I'll, uh, maybe the next question we'll tee up is Dominic and Gina, you can jump in about the uh, meter for success. Uh, but otherwise, over to Ruby. Hi, everyone again. Um, can you hear me okay? I'm having some technical difficulties. <laughs> We yeah, can hear you coming. okay. Great. Let okay. me know if Great. you want to circle back on this question, though, as you troubleshoot. Sounds like you're no, good. No, no, no. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. So what's challenging? Um, obviously, uh, this is not just public sector, but any type of uh, merging of organizations um, is, is difficult. Um, and you have different sets of uh, processes, uh, management styles that you need to reconcile into one. Um, the good news is I think that everyone is excited about this consolidation. You know, these, these offices had been 
um, in existence um, for a number of years and uh, the groups of people had been working together um, separately uh, before, um, but having one leader and having one strategic vision is really helpful in guiding everyone's work. Um, so I think it's uh, presented itself a lot of opportunities for us to um, collaborate, to really learn from each other. And, um, you know, there, there are growing pains for starting a new agency, a new organization. Um, but I think we're all excited to um, tackle these big challenges together. Awesome. Thank you, Ruby. Um, I will, if anyone else has follow-up questions on that, I guess post them in the Slido and we'll circle back on them. Otherwise, wanted to tag in uh, Dominic and Gina and uh, just recapping the question they were going to speak to um, was the meter for success. Uh, and so uh, uh, I thought maybe Dominic could speak a little bit on the product management side and then Gina um, could speak a bit on the um, design side. Um, but also I think Ruby, if you want to jump in also on uh, just general success that people might be interested, but uh, maybe we'll start with you, Gina. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Gina and I'm the design lead on the digital service team and I could speak on behalf of success metrics on the design part. Um, we just always um, view this as two prong, like getting clarity and delivery and for both parts, um, the combo platter of making sure we have data and we're doing quali qualitative user research. So on the clarity side, it's, could look like interviewing people and validating like we're solving for the right problem and we understand what the problem is and looking at metrics and analytics and kind of learning from what how the website is functioning today so it's like people are not clicking on this like there's a low rate here and just kind of getting all those numbers down so that then when we do come up with the solution we usability test to get validation of like what is usable where are people getting stuck and just kind of hearing and understanding like why certain things are like not a good experience um and then after we launch we have to check if that was successful and just kind of understanding like did our design solutions meet that need or improve that or increase the number so um i think like it's really important for us to always have like the people driven metric and then also like the data part to back it up um yeah so from a the product and application development angle. Um, I mean, there's there's definitely, you know, things, metrics like increase in downloads, increase in usage of, of systems, um, steady state, you know, we're not we're not seeing a drop off in usage. Um, but you know, really there's it's definitely a mix of quantitative and qualitative as well. Um, one of the first things is are we even able to measure in the first place? Like, did we set up the, the technology correctly to be able to, to measure what we want to? And did we, you know, did we think about, you know, what our goals are and what, what success looks like? Um, there, there's positive feedback from users of our services, positive feedback from our agency customers, since we serve a lot of agencies and, and um, you know, and are building, you know, really for them as well. Um, there's happiness of our staff, um, team cohesion and, and velocity, you know, we'll see on, on large products, you know, where, you know, we've had to form teams and we can see as we move along that, that, you know, they're, that they're in, they're in a flow. They're, they're really, you know, able to like, yeah, well, we've, we've got that task. We'll, you know, we'll take on that user story and, and feature and you know we'll um we'll deliver on that and so you, know, you can see that there's you know certain teams that are just gelling and other teams where you know where there there may be some some issues so kind of part of that is also you know are we able to are we um able to fix the the inevitable inevitable bumps that we that teams always have and are are they doing that in a collaborative way um Another thing is successful hiring and retention, which Ruby and Catherine have, have both um, talked about. You know, I think that um, you know it's it's important to you know see you, you can see if there's if there are issues if a certain area is, is not re retaining. Um, so I think that's that's at a high level. I would say those are some some of our key metrics. Awesome. Thank you, Gina and Dominic. 
So in a, in a second, I'm going to hand it um, over to uh, Ruby. There was a question about, um, can you describe how things are structured at OTI? How do you ensure that departments don't continue to work in silos? Um, so I think, uh, you know, the presentation covered a little bit already how things are structured, um, but maybe Ruby could jump in on um, how departments uh, don't work in silos. Um, and then after that, I see that there is a couple of questions related to hiring and diversity in hiring and outreach and hiring and career breaks and hiring. So then I think after that, we're just going to do a uh, hiring stuff question. Uh, but before I do that, I'll hand it over to Ruby to just talk a little bit about um, how we ensure that departments um, don't continue to work in silos. Great. So um, I'm interpreting that question as um, departments, city agencies across the city, um, as well as departments within OTI. Um, I think that's a good interpretation, but if you're the question <laughs> asker and you're on the line, feel free to jump in and uh, clarify whether it's by Slido or if you can top it, drop in the chat. Otherwise, Ruby, go with sure, your interpretation. I can answer, I can answer both ways. Um, so in terms of uh, all the city agencies that have um, IT shops or, or kind of um, business operations that rely on technology, how do we work together? Um, so there is a group um, that's under me, um, it's a customer service team. Um, it's made up of um, staff that man the service desk. So we're basically the IT help desk for a lot of the smaller agencies. Um, and also this group called agency relations managers, um, basically doing a lot of agency engagement work. They are liaisons from OTI to those city agencies and they serve as um, both kind of reactive and proactive support to those CIOs. Um, so the goal there is that um, we're able to field their requests and um, you know, navigate through whoever needs to be involved in OTI to solve the, the problem the agency has, but also understand the challenges across the city and bring people together where there are common challenges. So we're hearing that agency X is looking for a solution to do X, Y, Z, and agency Y has a solution that's very effective. Let's put them together and let's have them uh, chat. Um, so we're, we're thinking about ways of expanding this agency engagement team to solve that problem of, you know, agencies working in silos. Um, we need to build that um, network, um, build that information sharing platform, um, and then hopefully mediate a lot of those um, silo challenges. Um, and then within OTI, um, you know, my role uh, in strategic initiatives and many of my teams were created for the purpose of really facilitating, and coordinating the different groups in OTI. Um, so that's my measure of success. Are we all gelling together? Um, and um, we do this in many ways. You know, when we have a project, we pull together all the stakeholders and have regular meetings to make sure we're on. Uh, we're all in sync in terms of the scope and the schedule and, and navigate those issues and decisions together. We also have regular um, executive staff meetings where we talk about the work um, that every division is doing and um, we sync up in, in that forum as well. Um, and in a lot of informal ways, happy hours, events. Um, so those are our, um, our strategies for uh, hopefully breaking some silos. Awesome, thank you, Ruby. All right, I know we have about five minutes left, so I'm gonna jump into the, and I think we're all gonna have to jump in and contribute on this one. The question of hiring, such a great, great one. I will get the ball rolling. Um, so just to recap, there were some questions about, um, um, is there a policy about people uh, who've taken career breaks? Um, there's a question about how we approach diversity in hiring, um, and also just some general questions about um, how we uh, go about doing recruiting and hiring. So, um, uh, as sort of we've all kind of alluded to and Ruby spoke to specifically, um, the digital government space is such an exciting space to work in. I won't lie, of course there's bureaucracy and that can be a little bit frustrating. Um, in any democratic system, people get excited and they wanna move quickly, but also you don't necessarily want things moving at a lightning fast pace. We're very um, thorough and we you know, take a researched and methodical approach to things, um, but there's no, in my opinion, more exciting work and actually in many cases, not a more exciting team in my opinion, in the United States than what you're seeing happening here uh, in NYC. If you're not familiar with like the cycles of government, you'll know that we're at the more of a beginning side of an administration, meaning that the opportunity 
opportunities are there. Um, if you tend to join a government at the end of an administration, often um, people are sort of, or the, the big policy things are sometimes being wrapped up. So it's very exciting to join at the beginning of a new administration. Um, what's also exciting is that we get to work on some of the most high impact projects. You you know, you you can work in a, a startup or in a company, but it's it's very rare to find an opportunity to work on projects that impact so many people. This is an exciting thing. It's also what makes the work really difficult and why things like user research are such an exciting part of that work. Um, but there's also a reason that people like Ruby and myself um, and Gina and Dominic all haven't uh, left the work. Uh, Gina had previously worked at the US Digital Service, which many of you know is arguably with the strongest digital service in the country, let's say the federal government level, we're municipal, we like to think we're pretty strong as well. Um, and I think for many of us, myself included, we didn't, I didn't think I'd be working in government as long as I do. It's addictive. It's addictive because the impact is so huge. The opportunities are so exciting. And also the people are awesome. Um, so uh, no, as far as I know, maybe uh, Dominic or um, Ruby, you know, policies often better than me. Um, to the question about uh, people who've taken career breaks, there's there's no reason that that should be a blocker. We recognize that people have caring responsibilities and things come up in life. So we really encourage folks to apply for roles. Um, the city is extremely excited about having um, diverse candidates and people from all backgrounds applying. It's something that in the literal human resources process that goes into someone being hired is factored into account. Um, or it's it's something that's looked at to ensure that we do have a broad spectrum of people applying for roles. Um, but then as our team, the NYC Digital Service team, literally is recruiting, we're reaching out to many groups. Um, I think we are often on beta NYC newsletters, um, but also trying to reach out to, we, we keep a long list of different organizations who we want to keep looped in with our roles to make sure um, that, that people are hearing about it, even if they're not necessarily in the digital government space. Um, and then also sometimes when we're doing a big wave of hiring, we might you know set up info sessions with organizations um for instance we did one with um i can't remember which school it was because rapi led it i didn't lead it um but with more sort of early career professionals with some of the universities and we brought several universities together to do one session so that everyone had an opportunity to hear about the opportunity not literally everyone in the whole world, but many of the students had an opportunity to hear about the the, the job postings that we had. Um, so that's me getting the ball rolling. Um, I'm just going to open the floor to everyone else. I'm sure there's things I didn't touch on, uh, but hiring, say your, say your piece. Yeah. So one one thing, I mean, you did a really good job there. Um, I We need to keep in mind also that we use the civil service system in, in the city. Um, and so I just want to promote and act, you know, suggest to people to, um, it's very complicated system, but learn about it as much as you can. But more importantly, um, the Department of Citywide Administrative Services, they run the, um, the, all the tests, the open competitive exams. If you're, if you have an inkling, and you're not ready to now work in government, but you think maybe someday you want to, um, I highly recommend just starting to take these exams because that makes it so much easier to to hire people um, off of you know off of the, who people that have taken the exams and, and are and are on lists. So um, that's just sort of a pro tip um, that can that can really help down the road. And Dominic, can you briefly explain what a test and exam is? Because if they might people not, might not know. Yeah, so there are various, I mean, this is a very complicated system and we only have a few minutes, but um, there are there are um, different titles in the city, uh, civil service titles, which are different than our office titles. Um, they're very distinct. Like you, I, my title, my civil service title is administrative manager, but you can see that I'm not using that at all. Um, but I had, I took a number of, of exams that either were actually like fill in the bubble multiple choice um, or a combination of experience where I was able to put forward, you know, say I have this many years of experience in these key skills. And then I was, um, you know, basically qualified for a certain number on a list. And then I was picked up off that list. So, um, so these exams, so, so some of the exams are, are closed and some, when I say open competitive is anyone can, can take them. So if you remotely qualify, you can take these exams and and it helps to start progressing you um, to be able to work in the government. Um, but yeah, again, the Department of Citywide Administrative Services is the, they administer it and they should have information on their site about it. 
well said. Um, and I jumped in the, the chat to <clears throat> mention that what Dominic just explained actually isn't unique to NYC. Sometimes people think, oh, it's a uniquely quirky NYC thing. It's actually not. You'll see it in lots of governments ar around the United States and actually around the world. We can go into why that is later, but uh, it's just a thing about how governments hire. Um, all right, Gina and or Ruby. I could pop in. Um, I, I think um, hiring in tech in general is an echo chamber and there are a lot of small echo chambers and it's kind of like the way algorithms work. So I, I say a lot of it has to do with like us doing a ton of outreach and just making these um, opportunities accessible and it just comes with awareness. So um, I think we have like an ongoing list of places we're reaching out to, um, but I don't know, stay tuned, keep us accountable. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. Okay, and I know uh, Ruby had to drop for another session. So I think that's um, that's our cue that we've run over time. Um, yeah. I know we didn't get through every question, uh, but thank you so much for um, you know coming and attending. Um, Kate, I'll turn it over to you because um, it looks like you've got some other things to add. Yeah. Well, there's thanks. one more question, chat. First of all, how can um, folks reach your team and um, are there any contact details for those not applying for a job? Awesome. Yes, I will share with Kate. Kate, you'll be sharing out something afterwards with the group. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, and so, I, and I also believe uh, somebody asked me about um, sharing a deck. So I believe there's a public version of the deck that we'll be sharing with registrants um, and we can share contact information as well. Um, so um, thank you for adding that. Um, thank you, everyone. And Dominic, that was great advice. Um, I never even thought about that, but that's like great. Yeah, go take the exams. Also, it's fun to learn what they're asking and to brush up and study uh, about New York City government. Um, that said, um, I know there were a few questions that didn't get asked um, and maybe we can follow up and get some answers, um, uh, particularly around like, what projects are you working and is there like a backlog and a GitHub? So, um, and then somebody asked a question about publishing data sets and whether there were changes planned. I don't know if I have enough specifics about that, but I'm happy we coordinate a lot with open data and the team. Um, the New York City Open Data Portal is a really great resource, probably one of the best in the world. Um, so happy to uh, help understand that question better to answer it. Um, and then there were some questions about broadband access and community engagement. Um, and so, yeah, I'll try to follow up and um, get some answers to send out to everyone. Um, just a quick announcement. Um, we have a few announcements. Um, if you're hiring, if you have announcements or you're looking for a job, um, feel free to raise your hand right now or post in the chat. Um, we love to hear about that. Um, and oh, Deborah, go for it. Or you raised your hand yeah. for a second. Yes, I did. Um, I I am looking for a job in government, but um, actually I have a pretty unique background. I'm not an American citizen. I grew up in the States, in New York specifically, and I'm I was actually looking to work with innovation in government um, at the in Brazil and also studying for their open competitive exam. I'm wondering about hiring uh, um, non uh, green card holders, even though like I just researched and. Uh, it looks like it can be possible. I'm just wondering, like, what's the process for that and, you know, what I should watch out for? Awesome. Yeah, we should, yeah, we, Dominic, should get back, yeah, we should get back to you on that and maybe actually connect you with um, our human resources person because um, mm -hmm. I'm not very familiar with that. But I do believe you're right. Like, I think I believe if you have a um, NYC ID that that can can help you in that process so mm -hmm. yeah okay I don't have one but I do have other things like a tax ID and some other things like a high school diploma so um yeah I'll talk to HR then yeah yeah I'm just thinking because because then of course we also need tax IDs and stuff like that so definitely let's let's follow up on that it's a good question okay thank you to you I see I see your hand raised uh, yeah, uh, my question is, uh, I uh, checked uh, the opening jobs and uh, I find most of them uh, need uh, experienced uh, uh, people. But for me, I graduated from uh, a college uh, uh, a few, few months ago. So I'm an entry level uh, person. So do you have any uh, jobs for entry level person? Um, I'm, 
Yeah, awesome. Uh, I'll jump in on that. I think I need Dominic also to jump in because, um, yeah, most of the roles that we have uh, tend to have at least two years of um, uh, work experience as a, at a minimum. Um, we usually do have some um, opportunities, particularly affiliated with the universities. Um, but off the top of my head, I cannot recall the exact details. I'm not sure if Dominic, you do off the top of your head. No, you're you're right. It's it's a uh... It's an issue, um, unfortunately. So, um, and uh, you know, with that, there is that kind of that that gap, and that is another reason why I was saying, you know, it's it's important um, to to take the exam because that can, you know, if you have experience, you can take the exam um, in in a certain area or you could qualify, you know. So, um, it's definitely yes, it's a it's a tough that 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 just out of school, you know, not having enough experience yet, if you're not in the, you know, in that, in a school that has a program with the city, um, it, it's difficult. But I mean, I, I think there are, I think there are some positions, it's just, it's, there's not, it's not, there's not a lot. Um, but it is something that we, that we're aware of, you know, that, that we need to, um, try to fix and and when I say we I don't just mean OTI I mean this the, the city I will say um uh that you know if you're a student um or a grad level student so someone that's graduated college and you've studied in a field that's um relevant to like OTI's work um Beta NYC has a lab and periodically we hire um uh folks to work as like sort of data analysts analysts um civic analysts uh to help support and it's kind of like a learning and doing environment to gain portfolio to like build their portfolios. Um, you can talk to Z about it. Um, our current fellow or current associates are Eric, Sujin, and um Hache. And um yeah. Um and Felicia, I see your hand. Um, I'm just gonna quickly say two announcements and then we'll go back to hand raising. Um okay. this is a helpful resource for folks who want to like stay in touch and join uh, Beta NYC's community on Slack, on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, and then also check out um, if you're somebody that works for a community-based organization or a government office and you um, are looking for support to build maps or do different um, analysis projects. Um, we have a system called Radar, which is like a help desk for uh, civic uh, uh, analytical projects, and we would be happy to assist. Um, this is the work that builds portfolios of the associates, um, as well as sometimes our fellows. Um, so go there. And then really exciting, <laughs> one of my favorite things in the world, uh, Open Data Week. Uh, Open Data Week and School of Data. Um, if you've been part of our community for a while, you're probably Sick of hearing about this, but um, we love uh, this week. It's in March, um, and our call for proposals is open. We got it out many months earlier than usual, so we're like really patting ourselves on the back. Um, we, we work with the New York City Open Data team over at the at the Office of Technology and Innovation. Um, if you have an idea for a, a virtual event, it can uh, take place anytime during the week. If you have an idea for a School of Data session, that's our in person conference, and will be held at CUNY School of Law. Um, love to do office office hours with um, offices like yours, so we'll probably be inviting you to do something with us. Um, and um, yeah, uh, but we are looking for community um, uh, submissions, uh, so please share it and um, respond to it. And then I just want to also shout out that we have classes coming up um, as part of the Open Data Ambassadors Program. We're scheduling, um, we have a schedule of classes at this website, uh, nyc.gov slash discover open data. Um, the period is obviously not part of that. Um, and uh, we have a class next week and the following weeks. And it's basically just like, if you've never um, like explored the open data portal or if you, or if you have and you've gotten caught um, or like stuck somewhere, uh, come and just learn how we navigate it. Um, it's a fun class. It's taught by volunteer, tr uh, trained volunteers um, who were interested in open data and trained with us for a few weeks. and now know how to teach open data. And um, they're basically just gonna give you a taste of the open data portal and how you can use it to um, search issues in your community or build graphs and maps. Um, it won't go into full detail, but it's a very sort of fundamental introduction. Um, and then, yeah, thank you to everybody, to the Office of Technology and Innovation, Catherine, Dominic, um, Ruby, Gina, um, 
We are really happy to have you here and um, we are looking forward to future collaborations with your office. Um, and uh, yeah, excited about uh, the future and the future of technology and, and data and design um, in the city and to serve New Yorkers. Uh, so I'll um, say thank you to the audience as well. Um, now we can open the floor again to questions. If anyone has time to stay around, please do. Um, and you can come off mute um, and yeah. Thank you. So Felicia, uh, back to, uh, I'll let you have the floor now. Thank you so much, Kate. That was great. And I hope I didn't make you feel that you have to rush. Um, that was no, all. That's really, just uh, me. I'm really fast oh. talker. I need to oh, take okay. a breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was all really fascinating. Yeah, I have a pretty um, short question. Um, maybe you could actually answer it. Um, I'm just wondering about the policy towards remote work. Um, I would love to not have to be in uh, go to an office you know five days a week um so yeah i'll i'll, I'll go back on mute and... i have a feeling that that policy exists and um isn't changing but maybe someone who works in a government office wants to respond about that um the, uh, the policy is currently that you report to the office right yes for now for yes for the foreseeable future um and that is the position of the administration. I know that, um, you know, there's yeah. definitely, um, uh, there are certain unions that are advocating for, um, for hybrid. Um, so, you know, I guess watch the space, see if things change, but that is the policy. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, anyone else want to say hello or yes mark hey mark how are you hi kate how are you doing um yeah uh i mean this may be getting a bit into the weeds but um the you're obviously you're starting this new this new venture in city government um which you know i i i don't envy you but you're obviously taking baggage from the preceding uh, setup, and I'm wondering, and particularly, I mean, one of the issues was uh, reporting on data sets, which had kind of really fallen by the wayside, and really <clears throat> difficult to get information about uh, when there would be data sets actually published. Um, and I'm wondering, is this something you're going to be addressing or um, looking at for the uh, for the for the next iteration, and and specific, I, I think you know, it's like do it was really the one tasked with kind of managing the vetting of these data sets, um, and it just always seemed to me that you know, uh, speaking naively, whether Moda would be the better um, group to uh, handle that in the future. So, anyways, that's that's my question. <laughs> Awesome. Um, cool. Well, I have a short answer for you, which is, um, and you might have seen this at the outset of the um, session, but um, uh, Moda is now part of OTI. Um, so, um, you know, I think, you know, when we bring a lot of, a lot of agencies together, um, I actually think it's gone fairly smoothly overall because a lot of folks actually um, are enjoying just the ease of collaboration that comes being uh, within the same agency. So, um, so yes, that is something that OTI will uh, be included and uh, including, and um, is something they'll continue to prioritize. Right. Yeah. So, um, for any other questions, um, I was mostly uh, we. I think everyone has to hop off right now. We're fifteen minutes over. So, thank you. I appreciate everyone staying. Um, uh, if you have another question, feel free to post it in the chat. Um, if you want to just, I can hang out for a second if you have a question about hiring or jobs, um, and I'm happy to help direct um, things onward to OTI. Um, but I, I do want to respect their time and um, know that they have to jump. So um, thank you so much. Um, and um, I will hang out for another minute or two if you, and I think some folks from my team will still be here as well. Um, but thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Dominic. Thanks, everyone. Thanks Thank for you. your time. Great. Thank Bye. You. Take care. Bye.